Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are on ayah number 97 of Surah Al-Baqarah. And the topic is still about the Yahud. You may remember the topic of Banu Israel started from ayah number 40 of this surah. Before that, the topic was about Adam alayhi salam. And now we are on ayah number 97 and we're still on the topic of Banu Israel. So already these are 58 ayat, including ayah number 40. And it goes on and on. So you can see a massive portion of Surah Al-Baqarah is dedicated to Banu Israel. Why? So that we may learn the lessons from where they went wrong. So we do not repeat their mistakes. This is the idea. And also to establish evidence against the Yahud of al Madina that the last Prophet is indeed the Prophet that was promised to them. Anyway, ayah number 97 قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًّا لِجِبْرِيلًا فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَهُدًا وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ So قُلْ say مَنْ كَانَ whoever was عَدُوًّا means enemy لِجِبْرِيل to Jibreel Jibreel is the name of the premier angel of Allah He is the if you like liaison officer between Allah and the messengers now it could be pronounced Jibril or Jibra'il, it's all correct. They say Jibr means worshipper and Il means Allah, so worshipper of Allah. Now linguistically there is something missing in this sentence because it says whoever is an enemy of Jibril, then the next part is actually missing. So what if he's an enemy? What should happen? That part is missing, it is muqaddar, it is implied and it would read if stated explicitly Whoever is an enemy of Jibreel, then let him die in his anger. Moving on, فَإِنَّهُ Then indeed he has نَزَّلَهُ from Tanzil, which means to bring something down. عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ So he has brought it down. It meaning the Qur'an, because that is the wahi, the revelation. عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ We have spoken about the word qalb. Literally means to turn. He has brought the revelation down on your heart. Not on your brain. But the heart is the place of taqwa, it is the place of aqlul irshad, the intellect of guidance. This is the place which accepts or rejects the truth of Allah Jalla wa ala, not the brain. Understand this. The brain is important to comprehend matters, yes that's true. But ultimately the heart is what accepts or rejects. Bi'idhnillahi with the permission of Allah. Musaddiqan, it is mansub because it is hal of the verb nazzala. Musaddiqan means testifying to the veracity of lima bayna yadayhi, what was before it, meaning of the Injil and the Torah and the other scriptures. So the Quran agrees with the other scriptures in terms of worshipping one deity and believing in the messengers and worshipping how the messengers have instructed us. And also the Previous scriptures have spoken about the last messenger and the Quran also speaks about the last messenger and is the scripture of the last messenger. Wahudan and as a guidance, Wabushra and a glad tiding, so this is of Jannah, Lil Mu'minin, for the Mu'minin, meaning people of Iman and we have spoken about the word Iman. Now there are various narrations as to the background of this ayah, but they all seem to have one thing in common. The Jews took Jibra'il or Jibreel as an enemy. One narration says that a man from the Yahud asked the Prophet who is the angel who brings you the revelation and the Prophet says Jibreel and the Yahudi man says that we have taken Jibreel as an enemy. If it was Mikael we would have believed in you. And the justification is he says that Jibreel brings down punishment and hardship. So because of that they do not like him. But they need to think Jibreel does not bring any punishment or any hardship. He only does what he is ordered to do. If there is punishment and hardship, it is because of what your own hands have earned. So blame yourself. Do not blame Jibreel. This is what the Yahud failed to realize. And so likewise it is with the Muslim. The Muslim only ever blames his own self. He never blames the Kuffar or Shaytan for the losses that the Muslim may suffer. He only ever blames his own self. There is another narration in Al-Bukhari 
where Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu an, who was at that time a scholar of the Yahud and of noble descent, he asked the Prophet, I'm going to ask you about three things which only a Prophet knows the answer to. And these three questions were number one, what is the first sign of the final hour? Question number two, what is the first meal of the people of Jannah? And question number three, why does a child resemble either the mother or the father? Now the Prophet, not knowing the answer to any of these of course, was reliant on Allah Jalla wa'ala as is always the case and he answered by saying Jibreel has just told me the answers to which Abdullah ibn Salam replied he meaning Jibreel is an enemy of the Yahud from amongst the angels to which the Prophet recited this ayah Man kana aduwa li Jibreel up till the end so this is one of the asbab and nuzul the causes of revelation of this ayah and there are many other similar narrations to this anyway the narration goes on and the Prophet answers the question by saying the first portent of the hour will be a fire that brings the people from the east to the west and the second question the first meal of the Jannah will be the excess of the liver of a whale and as for the third question if the man's discharge overcomes the discharge of the woman then the child resembles a man and vice versa and upon this Abdullah ibn Salam testified to the Shahada and he told the Prophet look Prophet the Yahud are liars if they know I have embraced Islam they will lie about me meaning to say they will try to discredit me and so to counteract this the Prophet devised a clever plan without telling the Yahud that Abdullah had embraced Islam he simply asked them what do you say about this man Abdullah ibn Salam amongst you and they replied by saying he is the best of us the son of the best of us the leader of us the son of the leader of us so after this answer the Prophet asked them what would you think if he were to embrace Islam and the Yahud answered may Allah save him from that then the Prophet summoned Abdullah to give the shahada in front of them so as to leave no doubt that he has indeed embraced Islam and that the Yahud do not need to take the Prophet's word for it so after hearing this shahada the Yahud said he is the most evil amongst us and the son of the most evil amongst us and they continued speaking badly about him Abdullah said this is what I feared O Prophet so this is an interesting narration in the Sahih it's clever how the Prophet ﷺ exposed the Yahud as liars and people who tried to discredit those whom they dislike. And we see this happening even to this day and age. And they discredit people through the media. Let's take ayah number 98. It follows on. Man kana aduwa lillahi wa malaikatihi wa rusulihi wa jibreela wa mikala fa inna allaha aduwa lil kafirin. Man kana, whoever was aduwan lillahi, enemy of Allah, wa malaikatihi, and his angels, from malak, we have spoken about this word before, wa rusulihi, plural of rasul, messengers, risala is a message, wa jibreela, we have spoken about him in the previous ayah, wa mikala, so it can be pronounced mikal or mikail, they're all correct, remember in the previous narration, one of the Yahud says that, they hate Jibreel but they like Mikal. So both of these angels receive a special mentioning even though they are from the angels. Jibreel liaises with the messengers of this world. Mikal is in charge of the rain and crops. Just like a prime minister, he could have ministers, he could have an education minister and a transport minister and a cultural minister and so on so Allah Jalla wa ala can appoint certain duties for certain angels that does not mean that the angels have the ability of rububiyya that is Allah Jalla wa ala, but they carry out his commands in certain fields so similar to how Allah Jalla wa ala says those who believe and work righteousness well hang on working righteousness is from Iman but it enjoys a special mentioning due to its importance and the fact that people can out of laziness overlook righteous actions for in Allah then indeed Allah is aduwun 
an enemy lil kafirin to the kafirin we have spoken about kufr before again we find ilhar fi mawdi al idmar you would have expected allah jalla wa ala to say then indeed allah is an enemy to them but he explicitly uses the word kafirin now why does he do that for at least two reasons number one it shows us that anyone who is an enemy to allah and his angels and the messengers and to jibril and mikal then such a person is a kafir and point number two that allah is an enemy to anyone who is a kafir so it's worth pondering over these nuanced linguistical details let's reflect on these two ayatan from the background narration of ayah number 97 do you not find it amazing that the yahud even pick and choose from the malaika like they pick and choose from the messengers of the humans mikal he's the good one jibril he's the bad one likewise with the messengers ibrahim musa and others they'll accept them but isa and muhammad والسلام, they will not accept them look how they pick and choose we must not follow their footsteps we learn that hating any of the angels or being an enemy of any of the angels is kufr it is no different to hating allah Jalla wa ala, or hating any of the messengers or being an enemy to them it is all outright kufr we find the virtue of jibril and mikail or mikal as they are given a special mentioning in the quran we find the primary role of jibril which is to come down with the quran on the heart of the prophet and this is mentioned in other places in the quran as well the heart is the place which accepts or rejects not the brain the brain is used to comprehend matters around you not necessarily to accept or to reject the truth and guidance from allah Jalla wa ala. we learn that jibreel does not act on his own it is bi with the permission of allah and the same can be said with the other malaika they all descend or ascend with the permission of Allah Jalla wa ala. In our Aqeedah presentations, we have spoken about Idhan, the permission of Allah being Gawni or Shara'i, but we would rather not talk about that here. The listener may refer to the audio presentations on Aqeedah. Now here we could ask an interesting question. What about if a person is an enemy to the Mu'mineen? Because they are not mentioned in this ayah. Well, we say about this, if a person is an enemy to the mu'mineen because of them practicing the quran and the authentic sunnah then this is major kufr because this enmity is in reality an enmity to the quran and the authentic sunnah not to the people per se but if he is an enemy to the mu'mineen because of their race or their skin color or some other culture or language or any of that sort of thing then this is not kufr but rather it is simply jahiliya and partisanship and hizbiya and maybe nationalism which is all wrong but not kufr the prophet ali sallam said man aada waliyan li faqad aadantuhu bil harb whoever is an enemy of a wali of mine then i give him notice of war so whatever the case may be if you are an enemy to a person who is in fact a wali of allah jalla wa ala then Allah gives you notice of war. So one needs to be immensely careful about declaring enmity verbally or in his heart to a practicing mu'min. Because if he happens to be a wali of Allah Jalla wa ala, then you are in major trouble. We may also take an aqidah point that it is indeed possible for Allah Jalla wa ala to have enmity to certain people. That is one of his traits and attributes. Okay, let us take ayah number 99. وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ وَمَا يَكْفُرُ بِهَا إِلَّا الْفَاسِقُونَ وَلَقَدْ We have spoken about this before. There are three emphases in this word. وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا It's like Tanzil sent down. إِلَيْكَ To you, O Prophet. آيَات Signs. بَيِّنَات Clear. They say an ayah is an alama, which means a sign. However, strictly speaking, an ayah is a bit more than that. It is a sign indeed and also an evidence. 
So put that together and it is an ayah. So alama wad dalil. So the ayat bayyanat spoken of here is the Quran. It has ayat bayyanat. This is exactly what we are studying in our tafsir session. Wama yakfuru biha and none makes kufr of it. Kufr here means rejection. Linguistically, kufr means ingratitude because it comes from the word which means to cover. So when you cover the favors given to you, this is ingratitude. You pretend that no one has done you any favors. So clearly this is ingratitude. إِلَّا الْفَاسِقُونَ Except the fasiqun, fasaqa means to come out or emerge. They often talk about the fruit fasaqa from its covering, a fruit coming out of its covering. What's being referred to here is when somebody comes out or exits or leaves the fold of obedience. Let's take some fawaid from this ayah. Allah has sent down the Quran, so Allah is high and He has sent it down, so we are lowly. He describes the Quran as ayat bayyanat, it is clear. If certain ayat are not clear, then this is because of our deficiency and it is upon us to study the tafsir to an appropriate level of depth, enough for us to understand what the intended meaning is. But the ayat themselves are clear. Those who know them know them. Those who are ignorant of them are ignorant. However, at this point, there appears to be something of a contradiction. Allah Jalla wa ala also describes the Qur'an as some ayat being muhkam and others being mutashabih. So muhkam means singular in meaning and clear. And mutashabih is unclear. Unclear meaning it could be interpreted this way or that way and we are not sure. However, to resolve this apparent contradiction, we simply say that when you take the unclear ayat and juxtapose them with other ayat of the Qur'an so that some parts of the Qur'an explain other parts, then even the unclear ayat become clear. So the end result is the whole Qur'an is clear. And fasiqun here would refer to the kuffar, but one might say, well, of course the kuffar reject the ayat of the Qur'an. That's exactly why they are kuffar. So what do we actually learn from him saying fasiqun? Well, it is true that there are from the kuffar who accept the ayat of the Qur'an and they are not fasiqun. So what the fasiqun or even kafirun would refer to here is people who are completely given to kufr, meaning that they have sold their soul to kufr and to fisq, not those kufar who have their fitra intact and when they hear the ayat of Allah Jalla wa Ala, they embrace. They are not fasiqun. So it's important then to understand the difference between these two types of kufar. The first type accepts the ayat of Allah, they are not fasiqun, and the second type reject the ayat of Allah and these people are given to kufr. They are, if you like, just too far gone and will never accept. Now, of course, we do not know which of the two categories any particular kafir fits into because we do not know their heart. So let's bear that in mind and Allah knows best.